Hello and welcome to the latest doorstep history, which is coming to you from a very wet Licky Hills Country Park. Welcome back to the Licky Hills Country Park, where we're helping the Civic Society and the Trees for Life group celebrate their centenary. Now to explain the significance of where we are, this is Jeff Cole, Chairman of Birmingham Trees for Life. So why is this spot being chosen today then, Jeff? This year is our 100th year and we're here at the Licky Hills because our first president, the Earl of Plymouth, actually owned most of the land around here and was responsible for a significant part of the Licky Hills becoming public parkland, which we've all been able to enjoy for the last 100 years. So exactly what's, what's the plan, exactly what's happening today then? So this area of the Licky Hills is known as the Arboretum and as you can see there's been a fair amount of tree felling recently because some of the trees had started to get too old or they were inappropriate. So we've done some work with the Parks Department and we're going to completely revamp the Arboretum which will be known as the Birmingham Civic Society Centenary Arboretum and create a tree trail leaflet and a whole range of new and interesting trees and we've, today we planted with the Lord Mayor and the Chairman of the Civic Society and our supporters Civic Society members and the Licky Hill Society, 25 new trees. So uh, how many trees do you reckon you've, you've planted throughout the year then? Well this particular year we've planted uh, close on seven and a half thousand trees and in our 12 year history um, we now reached the grand total of 75,000 new trees in Birmingham. Fantastic isn't it? It's great and what's really great of course is the fact that nearly all of those trees have been planted by Birmingham school children. So we've got school, school children now who at eight and nine years of age will have planted a tree 10 or 11 years ago who are now kind of in their early 20s and be able to go back to their local park or their local green space and look at the trees that they planted. So it's all about giving children the chance to create a neighbourhood for their future and we think that's really important. Hello, I'm Lucy Worsley and you're watching Doorstep History. Now at the end of the football season, fans have been remembering one of the West Midlands great footballing heroes, Jeff Astle of West Bromwich Albion. And a special play has been held at the Crescent Theatre to raise funds for dementia awareness. I met up with some fans who have fond memories of watching Jeff Astle play. The striker scored 174 goals in 360 games for the Baggies, none more famous than the one which won the FA Cup 49 years ago, and his celebration photo has become one of the most well-known pictures in the history of West Bromwich Albion. Fans have fond memories of him, even after he'd finished his Albion career, which was cut short by injury in 1974. I always wanted to be Jeff Hustle when we played in the park, can't wait to get up the Albion to watch him and see. It was always extra special if he scored. Uh, February 19, 1994, Grimsby away, Tuesday night, drew 2 2. I was sat in the Findus frozen food stand and Lorraine and Jeff just randomly came and sat next to me. So it just proved what a fan he was to be there. Don't on a Grimsby Tuesday, a wet, Grimsby, miserable oh, night. Yeah. And we, let's face it, we weren't great. I wouldn't even had one hero, and obviously it was Jeff Astor. But when I was growing up, I had the uh, well pleasure of uh, living in the next street to the Astle family when they lived oh, in right. uh, Moor Close. And uh, we used to wait on the corner of the street. And I'd be the little uh, kids who was waving to him. Often he'd pull up and have a chat with us and everything. And uh, to me, he was, just, he was just my superhero. He seemed to score a goal every week, run up behind the goal, hands aloft in front of me, and I, and I was just in awe. Meeting Jeff several times after he finished playing, he was an even bigger hero then because he was such a great bloke. Mm -hmm. just so approachable, so friendly, he'd always had time for you. Just a top man. So much so that when we started our business, we actually uh, named our premises after Jeff Astle House in Cradley Heath. It was a pleasure to have him as an hero and as a friend. I've only ever had one true hero in life and that's, uh, that's, that's Jeff Astle. He's, he was the king and he always loved me. Football fans never ever forget their old heroes. And you can only wonder what the £22,000 signing from Notts County in 1964 would be worth today. We're here at the site of the new swimming baths in Ladywood. The old swimming baths were demolished over 20 years ago. It looked like this. Do you remember it? The first baths were opened in Victorian times in 1883. Oh, but I don't think anyone can remember that. 
The baths were replaced in 1940. Later this year, we're going to interview people to get their memories. So get in touch via tntnews.co.uk. Later in the year, we'll be looking at some stories connected with local people that were involved in the First World War. If you have any pictures, stories or memorabilia about the events of 1914-1918, then please get in touch with us on Doorstep History. Now we'll have more from here later in the programme, but now, as they say, here's something completely different. I'm at St Andrews outside the famous trophy cabinet here which has got obviously a number of trophies, not quite so many as there are in other clubs but the ones that they have got they're fairly valuable and make up a fantastic part of Birmingham City's history. But we're looking at one particular trophy today which is quite unique but before we see the trophy with me is Rick Coleman who is the esteemed historian here at St Andrews and the game that we're talking about was against the mighty Barcelona, wasn't it? It was indeed, yes, in a competition called the Intercities Fairs Cup, uh, which was in the 1950s and 1960s. And uh, yes, Birmingham City were fairly successful in that competition. Reached the final twice, once, as you say, against the mighty Barcelona. Uh, it was over two legs, and here at St Andrews, um, it was Birmingham City nil, Barcelona nil. So we had to go to the new camp in front of, I believe, 70,000 people, mm -hmm, yeah. uh, where we unfortunately lost 4-1. The Blues were presented with this trophy, weren't they? So shall we have a look in the cabinet? Yeah, see if we can have not? a look, see what the trophy is. It's an ashtray. It's an ashtray, I think. Shows a little bit how uh, football has changed, perhaps along with the way society has changed in general, as a trophy, uh, as a piece of memorabilia of a famous game. Just shows how society has changed, doesn't it? And it was so. the in thing then, of course, every, everybody was smoking. Yes. But even then, it seems a bit strange to give somebody an ashtray. Yes. It was presented to one of our directors at the time, who's passed it through to the family, who's uh, presented it to us because it's obviously a marvellous bit of memorabilia for the club. Well, it turns out the 1959-60 season was a bad one for Birmingham City. They just avoided relegation. Unfortunately, at the fag end of the season, they survived. This ashtray would have been useful if everything could have gone up in smoke. You're watching Doorstep History and now from ashtrays to ash trees again as we return to the Licky Hills Country Park. And Jeff Cole is still with me from Trees for Life. Now earlier last year there was a big hoo-ha in Broad Street over the, the famous tree which was demolished to make way for the redevelopment of Centenary Square and I know that uh, Trees for Life were part of a big protest to try and save that tree. Obviously the tree eventually was demolished, but something good has come out of it in terms of council policy. And that's, that really is true because, um, you know, many of us genuinely had a tear in our eye on the day that that magnificent tree came down and it's all part of history. But it did, I think, really raise awareness um, with the politicians in Birmingham in particular that ordinary Birmingham people really care about trees. They're important to them. It's part of their lives. They remember walking up and down Broad Street under, their, under that tree probably for their whole of their lives. So the council re-examined their tree policy and realised that it, it was just out of date. It wasn't fit for the 21st century. So they've done a tremendous piece of work over the last six or eight months since the tree came down and they've created a new tree policy for the city of Birmingham which we hope will better protect the trees in the future and that policy was formally adopted by the City Council, by all the political parties, that's awfully important, so this isn't a political issue, all the councillors of Birmingham Council put their hands up and voted for a new tree policy which has now been adopted. And we all hope that, it, as well as preventing perhaps a reoccurrence of that uh, thing in Broad Street, that it will give better protection for all the trees uh, that we all value and, and it's such an important part of our everyday life. Brilliant. Yep, thank you, Jeff. So that, that's about it from uh, this edition of uh, the programme. Thank you for watching from Jeff and myself. Goodbye. <laughs>